Hello my wonderful viewers, you are welcome again to another CAFGO ICT for beginner lessons. My name is Ernest Atto Benton. Viewers, in the previous lesson, we looked at classification of computers by sizes. We said we have the largest is the supercomputer, the second largest is the mainframe, the third largest is the mid-range or mini computers. And the last largest form of computer is the microcomputers. And viewers, we said microcomputers are also known as personal computers. We are familiar with personal computers. So in this lesson, we are also going to look at forms of personal computers around us. The kinds of personal computers that we are using today. So the lesson for today is on forms of personal computers forms of personal computers before we start let's mark the assignment we were given on the previous lesson one state three bases of grouping computers by their sizes state three bases of grouping computers by their sizes and we say when you are grouping computers by their sizes you look first at their physical size we also look at their processing speed. We look at the storage capacity and then the usage as well. So any of these three answers are correct. The last one is the usage. The last one is the usage. Two, mention two uses of supercomputers. Mention two uses of supercomputers. One, it is used for scientific applications, and then two, for complex calculations. For scientific applications and for complex calculations. Three, give three examples of personal computers. Give three examples of personal computers. And you have desktop computer, you have laptop computer, and then you have the smartphone. The smartphone. So viewers, these are the answers to the questions you were given on the previous lesson. I believe you all had them right. Good. Let's move to today's topic on forms of personal computers. Forms of personal computers. Let's begin with our lesson objectives. At the end of the lesson, you will be able to describe what a desktop computer is. Two, give three advantages of a desktop computer and then three give three advantage give three disadvantages of a desktop computer so at the end of the lesson you'll be able to describe what a desktop computer is to give three advantages of a desktop computer and then three give three disadvantages of a desktop computer so viewers if you pay attention and then you walk through the lesson with me You'll be able to achieve all these objectives at the end of the lesson. Now let's begin with what personal computers are. Personal computers are what we normally call PCs. PC. So anytime you hear the acronym PC, we are talking about personal computers. In classification of computers, they are also known as microcomputers. And we said that anytime you hear the word micro, what should come to mind is something that is very small. So when we are talking about personal computers, they are very small as compared to the other sizes of computers. These are computers designed for use by one person at a time. So when we talk about personal computers, we are talking about computers that are designed for use by one person at a time. So it means more than one person cannot use it at the same time. It will create some inconvenience. Assuming, let's take this woman here using this laptop. This woman is maybe typing her document. Assuming I also want to use this to watch a movie. Can it be possible that as she is typing, I'll also be watching a movie on the same laptop. It cannot be possible. Unless she finishes typing before I can also get access to the laptop, 
and then I also watch my movie. So these are computers designed for use by one person at a time. It's not like the other sizes we talked about in the previous lesson that thousands and hundreds of people can use them at the same time. When you talk about personal computer, that is why the name says personal, personal computers. It can be used by one person at a time. A personal computer is a multi-purpose microcomputer whose size and the capabilities and price make it possible for individual to use. A personal computer is a multi-purpose computer whose size and then capabilities and price make it possible for individual to use. So when you talk about multi-purpose, it means you can use it to perform more than one task. As I said, I can use this to play games, type my document, do my research, watch a movie, listen to music, do my graphic designs. They are multi-purpose. And they are size, then they, their capabilities and price make it possible for personal or individual use. Now let's look at forms of personal computers. When you look at these examples on your screen, you see that they are not of the same size. So we are going to look at forms of personal computers. Personal computers take different forms based on end user usage. What the person who is going to use the computer takes into consideration. So you have lots of personal computers, but based on the end user, you the person using the computer, you are referred to as the end user. The end user. So if I look at this tablet computer in front of me, I'm the end user of this tablet computer. I'm using this tablet computer. So when we talk about the various forms, you have to decide what you are going to use that personal computer for so that you can choose from the various forms that we have. So some of the forms we have are stationary computers. Computers that are fixed at one place. It cannot be moved from one place to another. We have mobile computers. Computers that you can move from one place to another. We have mobile devices. Computers that can be held in the hands. That's what we call mobile devices. And then we have embedded computers. When we talk about embedded computers, we are talking about a small programmable chip fixed inside the bigger uh, machine that help the machine to perform certain activities. So we are going to go through all this, but in today's lesson, we are going to look at stationary computers. And in the previous lessons, we will go deep into these forms as well. So in today's lesson, we are going to start with stationary computers. Stationary computers. Now what are stationary computers? These are personal computers you cannot carry from one place to another. These are personal computers you cannot carry from one place to another. That doesn't mean that you cannot move it at all. But it becomes inconvenient for you when you are trying to move it from one place to another. Assuming you are using an example like a desktop computer and you always have to remove the cables and then send it to work. When you close from work, you bring it back. You do that every day. You can do it as well, but it's, it's very inconvenient for you to do that. So when we talk about stationary computers, it is, you cannot carry it from one place to another. And the most popular ones are the desktop computer, the workstation, and then kiosk computer. Desktop computer, workstation, and then kiosk computer. And for the purpose of this lesson, we are going to look at desktop computer. Desktop computer. What is a desktop computer? I believe you are all familiar with what a desktop computer is. A desktop computer is a stationary computer designed to be used on a desk. 
or a table that hence the name desktop computer you put it on top of a desk or a table you cannot put it on the floor and then use it you cannot set it up on your laps and use it you cannot hold it in your hands and then use it you have to put it on top of a desk that is why we call it desktop computer so a desktop computer is a stationary computer designed to be used on a desk or a table and that is how it looks like a desktop computer a desktop computer has the system unit so that's the system unit the system unit it has the monitor this is the monitor the one that looks like the screen this is the monitor and then the keyboard the device that you use to key in data or information into the system and then lastly the mouse so these four separate pieces of hardware forms a desktop computer so if i own a desktop computer it means i have a system unit i have a monitor i have a keyboard i have a mouse when desktop computers started coming into the system it came without the mouse so those who started computing early enough can use the computer mostly without a mouse that is where keyboard shortcut came some people can use their computer effectively with little use of the mouse but today because of the graphics interface that we have if you own a desktop computer you must have a system unit a monitor a keyboard and a mouse these four basic components will give you a desktop computer because this type of computer has separate pieces of hardware that is the reason why it is stationary it is so inconvenient to move it from one place to another a desktop computer runs on power from wall outlet so before you can get power to run this type of personal computer you need to plug it into a wall outlet to get power it doesn't operate on batteries desktop computers do not operate on batteries so you have to plug it the system unit and then the monitor before you can get the power to operate a desktop computer A desktop computer system unit that's the system unit a desktop computer system unit is the most important device the most important device and contains the processing and storage components so all the processing and storage components that comes with the computer are fixed inside the system unit so when we talk about the processing component we are talking about the CPU that's the central processing unit it is fixed inside the system unit and then we have the storage component that is the hard disk and then the memories that stores all your data this CPU serves as the brain of the computer serves as the brain of the computer so as human beings if we're a human being without a brain you can't live the same way a computer without a CPU is useless the CPU means central processing unit central processing unit and the hard disk here stores every program data or information that you need on the computer and all these two most important things are found inside the system unit not the keyboard not the mouse not the monitor but inside the system unit that makes it the most important device that makes it the most important device this most important device as a system unit can be tower when we say a tower this is a tower system unit it stands vertically on the floor or on the table so this kind of system unit that stands vertically is called a tower system unit 
the tower system unit and then the one that is placed horizontally on a table like this whereby you can place your monitor on is called the flat bed so we have two forms of system units basically the tower that can stand vertically or the flat bed that sits horizontally on a table so these are the two basic forms of system units and they all function the same they all function the same the earlier computers that came came with flatbed system units but these days most computers uses most uh, desktop computers use the tower system units the tower system units now let's look at how you can set up a desktop computer. You see that this form of computer has four separate components. Four separate components. How do I connect them? How do I connect them so that they can all be connected to, the, to each other and then I can use it? So that is what we are looking at assuming you go and buy a monitor a system unit a keyboard and a mouse how am i going to connect it to start enjoying the use of a desktop computer so before you can set up a desktop computer you need a system unit whether a tower or a flatbed you need a system unit you need a monitor you need a keyboard and then you need a mouse so before you can set up a desktop computer, you need a system unit, you need a monitor, you need a mouse, and then you need a keyboard. Apart from these main components, you also need cables. So this cable is called a VGA cable. You also have power cables. There are two here because you use one to connect to the system unit and you use this one to, to connect to the monitor to help these two components get power to operate and you use this VGA cable to you as you go on with the lesson you see where or why we use this VGA cable now we have our devices the four basic components and then we have our cables first at the back of the system unit, you see the power port here. So if you look at the power cable here, you use this connector to fix it here. So this is where you put this side of the power cord, the connector here. You All the connectors or all the sockets that you have at the back of the system unit, they are called ports port so this is the power port so if i take the power cable i connect this side to this power port as the arrow is showing here and then i connect this three pin plug to the mains here to the mains here so this is how i connect my system unit make sure when you are connecting this socket will be off this socket will be off so i connect this side to the power port here and i connect this side to the mains good now i finish connecting my system unit the next is the monitor the next is the monitor so the monitor too will need a power cable so i'll connect this side here that is where the arrow is showing. that is where the port is i'll connect it here and then i'll also put this connect this side to the socket here main socket here and this is how you connect a monitor to your wall uh, wall outlet so that means that when you buy a desktop computer you will need two power cables if you go and buy a set of system units when you are checking the cables make sure that you have two power cables one for the system unit one for the monitor good now we need to connect this monitor
to the system unit you need to connect this monitor to the system unit why do we need to connect the monitor to the system unit we have given power by connecting the power cable we connect it to the system unit so that whatever is happening inside the system unit will be shown by the monitor that's the reason why we connect the monitor it's like having a television and a deck if I don't connect the deck to the television the deck will be playing all right if I the movie is on a pen drive or on a disc it will be showing but how will I see it how will I see the images unless you connect it to your television and that is where we use the RGB cables we have some cables that we connect from the TV to our deck we have the red the white and the yellow connectors and then the red and white is for sound and the yellow is for pictures in the same way we connect this monitor to the system unit so that whatever the processor or whatever is happening inside the system unit will be shown on the monitor for us there are different ways we can connect the monitor to the system unit there are different ports at the back of the system unit we said that all the ports that we have here all the connectors we have here are called ports they are called ports and there are different ways that you can connect a monitor to the system unit and these are the ports at the back of the system unit that can be used to connect monitors we have the VGA that is the video graphics graphics array port video graphics array port that is the VGA we have the DVI DVI digital video interface we have the HDMI we have high definition multimedia interface and we have the USB that is the universal serial bus compost so these are the four ports at the back of the system unit that can be used to connect the monitor to the system unit you cannot use all the four at the same time so you have to connect one so the most commonest one is the VGA port the most commonest one is the VGA port so the VGA port is the most commonest means of connecting a monitor to a system unit a monitor to a system unit so we have our VGA cable here so you see that this VGA cable has two two outlets one two so one will be for the monitor and one will be for the system unit and that is how we connect it there's one at the back of the monitor that is where this one is connected the other end is connected and there's a, and this is how it looks like the holes here are 15 the holes here are 15 you have five on top five in the middle five down they are 15 and you have 15 pins inside this connector that locks inside this hole so we have one two at the back of the system unit so you put one here and then you fix the other one here and that will help you to see whatever is happening in the inside the system unit. so this is the connector this is the connector we call it the VGA cable video graphics array VGA cable so you use it I remember there was a time an employer wanted someone to manage a computer lab for him so when he called the applicants for interview he just sends them to the lab and then this employer was having about 10 boxes there with a brand new desktop computers inside what he did was that he removed all the VGA cables from the boxes he removed it and then when you come inside the lab you ask the applicant to set up the desktop computer those who knew what they were doing they told the man that oh he seems a video cable is not part of the cables that were inside so immediately the employer will know that you know what you are talking about 
some also connected everything and then told the employer that the monitor is not working they didn't know that there is a cable that has to be connected to the system unit from the monitor that will help you to see whatever is going on inside the system unit so through that he was able to shortlist and then eliminate those who are not good for the job so whenever you are connecting when you go and buy a desktop make sure this as i showed you you have different ways of connecting a monitor to a system unit but make sure we we call them video cables make sure that you have one of them inside your package so that you can use it to connect it to the monitor you can use it to connect the monitor to the system unit now let's get to the keyboard we have learned how to connect power cables of the desktop we have uh, of the system units we have done that of the monitor and we have learned how to connect the monitor to the system unit now it's left with the keyboard and the mouse the keyboard and the mouse connecting the keyboard and the mouse to the system unit we have three different ways that you can connect a keyboard or a mouse to the system unit the first one is the ps2 cable that is personal systems 2 cables personal systems the ps means personal systems and this is how it looks like this is how it looks like there are two main colors that's the move color and then the green color the green color is for the mouse and then the move color is for the keyboard so at the back of the system you need to you see the move color here and the green that's how it looks like so you see that they have drawn the keyboard icon here you have the mouse icon here so you just put this green connector in this port that's a ps2 port here you connect the move one to to the keyboard port here so that is one means of connect so if you buy a keyboard and your keyboard has this connector or the mouse has this connector then that is where you will connect it that is where you and we call this cable ps2 cable and then these ports are called ps2 ports one disadvantage about this ps2 port is that if i'm switching on my desktop computer and these two cables are not connected to start with the machine it will not work i will on the machine as well it will boot the monitor everything will be working but because i fixed these two devices after i switch the computer on these two the keyboard and the mouse will not work so anytime that your desktop computer is using these two the ps2 cables make sure they are fixed inside or at the back of the system unit firmly before you switch on the system unit if you switch it on before you fix it the two devices will not work because they start with the computer if you start the computer before fixing them they will not work that is one disadvantage about the ps2 cables so this is one way you can connect a mouse or a keyboard to the system unit so you see the mouse having a ps2 connector here the keyboard to having a ps2 connector another means that you can connect a keyboard and a mouse to a system unit is through the usb that is the universal serial bus usb so you see that this keyboard is this keyboard has a usb connector this mouse has a usb connector and then we have several usb ports at the back here this is how it looks like this is how the usb port looks like so you just fix it inside most system units have about four or even six eight usb ports so you can fix them in any some even have some port usb ports at the front of the system unit so that is where you fix these devices the keyboard and the mouse we said that with the ps2 if you fix it after you switch on the machine the keyboard and the mouse will not work but with the, with the usb we normally call it plug and play if the machine is on and you fix it it will work 
if you fix it before you switch on the machine to its work so that is one advantage about this and then the last one is you can connect a mouse to a keyboard through usb bluetooth usb bluetooth you saw that this one has cables this mouse and keyboard has cables but if you look at this one no cables their connector is a bluetooth and you take this small bluetooth device and fix it in any of the usbs and then these two devices will work these two devices will work so this one too you can fix it before you start the machine or after you start the machine it will work but these ones do not have cables you just fix them and then the connection but the keyboard uses dry cell that is a battery the mouse also uses battery to work and they all connect to the system unit through this usb you fix it in any of the usb ports we have here and then these two devices will work so after you connect everything to the usb then your machine can work so when we are connecting a keyboard and a mouse to the system unit you either use the usb either bluetooth or the cable and then the ps2 you see that this ps2 the first one that we saw was green and move but this one is white it doesn't matter this cable can be any color but at the back of the system unit know that the green is for the mouse the move is for the keyboard no matter the color this cable may have make sure that the green is for the mouse and the move is for the keyboard so after connecting everything then your computer is set up and then you switch it on so this is how we set up a desktop computer this is how we set up a desktop computer US now recently we have what we call all-in-one desktop computer all-in-one what is all-in-one desktop computer this is how it looks like so a recently developed type of desktop computer is called an all-in-one desktop computer this houses the processing components in the same case that holds the monitor there's no separate system unit so the system unit is built with the monitor it is normally found at the back a small case at the back that holds the processing component and the storage component so this comes without a system unit the system unit is built together with the monitor and we call it all-in-one desktop computer all-in-one desktop computer so that is a new type of desktop computer that we have these days all in one so if you are using all in one you can use a bluetooth mouse and keyboard and then you use that you see that the cables that you use will be minimal you use less cables in connecting uh, an all-in-one desktop computer now viewers let's look at the advantages of this type of computer the advantages of this type of computer one desktop computers are generally less expensive they are less expensive as compared to other forms of personal computers that we are we will talk about they are less expensive and then two desktop computers are easier and less expensive to upgrade so when your mouse is not working you can easily buy one and fix it when your keyboard is not working you can easily buy so it is less expensive to upgrade the next one is that desktop computers have more comfortable keyboard and much easier mouse to use some of these uh, personal computers have touch screens and touch pads which most people are not familiar but this one has a mouse a separate mouse keyboard that makes it easier and comfortable to use they also use standardized parts any keyboard can be fixed into a system unit unlike other devices that need specific keyboard their own type of keyboards or pointing devices like touchpad that will work with it any power cable 
a power cable that can power a rice cooker the same power cable can power a system unit or a monitor so they use standardized parts they don't use specialized parts like laptops that you look at that uses uh, specialized chargers and the rest even your phones use specialized chargers android have their own chargers uh, iphone have their own charge other uh, phones have their own chargers but this one uses standardized parts desktop computers are stronger with high performance they are strong type of machines with high performance and then desktop computers have easy access to internal hardware it is easy to repair when your system unit is faulty it is easy to open the system unit and then remove the part that is faulty and then fix it so they have easy access to the unlike phones and uh, laptops and then some other personal devices that are compact but desktop computers have easy access to internal hardware now let's look at some disadvantages of desktop computer some disadvantages one it is very bulky to due to its separate components one machine a monitor a system unit keyboard mouse they are very bulky unlike small 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 devices and it also takes time to set it up it takes time to set it up unlike laptop or other things that you just switch it on and then you go your way this one you have to connect some cables and then make sure they are all working before you can get your computer to use it is also not convenient to carry it around assuming you go to school with this type of personal computer any day you are going to school or you are going to work you have to carry this computer to work bring it back carry it it is very inconvenient so desktop computer is not convenient to carry it around and it also consumes more electricity or power because the system unit has its own power cable the monitor has its own power cable and the keyboard and the mouse they drive their power from the system unit so this type of computer consumes more power as compared to the other ones then because desktop computers are plugged to the mains or the main socket anytime that there's power cuts you will lose everything if you were typing a document or anything like you will lose it because it doesn't have any battery any battery that can run on in case of power cuts so you will lose any unsaved work when there's power cuts and also because of power fluctuations if you don't use uh, a UPS that is uninterrupted power supply kit it can also destroy your system unit and it also takes up more desk space assuming I have to put the tower system unit on my desk the monitor the keyboard it will take up more desk space unlike other devices just like this tablet in front of me small desk space but look at the desktop here it will take more desk space good we have come to the end of the lesson we are almost at the end of the lesson on forms of computers basically desktop computer us let's look at uh, some tests let's test ourselves on this lesson one the computer's critical parts used to process and store data is the the computer's critical part used to process data and then store data is there you have a monitor you have keyboard you have system units good the answer is system units so the most important part or the critical part used to process or store data is the system units two two common designs for desktop system units are flatbed and two common designs for desktop system units are flatbed and we have tower we have case we have handheld good the answer is tower that stands vertically on a table or you can put it on the floor and the flatbed is sit horizontally on a table 
the main component of a desktop computer is the the main component of a desktop computer is the you have mouse you have system unit you have keyboard great the answer is system unit so when you are assuming a desktop computer let's say a home use or a slightly used desktop computer cost 700 cities you can buy only the system units at 500 cities and the 200 can buy the mouse the keyboard and the monitor so the system unit is the main component so if you have a desktop computer and the most powerful part is the system unit for the cable shown is used to connect the dash to the system unit so this cable shown what do we use it to connect to the system unit this cable shown we have keyboard we have monitor we have mouse great the answer is monitor we use this cable to connect the monitor to the system unit good five the mouse or keyboard can be connected to the system unit using the ps2 cable or the mouse or keyboard can be used to connect to the system unit using the ps2 cable <coughs> or so we have vga we have usb we have rgb good the answer is usb you can connect it through a ps2 cable that is the green and the move colors or the usb good us we have all done well as usual let's take this assignment and work on them one states the four basic parts that make up a desktop computer four basic parts that make up a desktop computer two mention any two advantages of the desktop computer mention any two advantages of the desktop computer and then three give any two disadvantages of a desktop computer us i'll give you two minutes to put this assignment down two minutes you are welcome back and I believe we are all able to put down this assignment US we have come to the end of this lesson that is lesson 7 on our journey through ICT for beginners and today we looked at the forms of microcomputers that is personal computers and we looked at stationary computers computers that can be that cannot be moved from one place to another Today we looked at desktop computers. In our next lesson, we will look at other forms of stationary computers. 
Until we meet again next time, this is your ICT instructor, Ernest Atu Bento. Bye-bye.